Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. I walked back to the baseline and for 45 minutes the excruciating pain that was in my wrist for the whole 24 hours before disappeared. Sound is so transparent if I'm out of tune you'll come to know that I, I, I'm not playing properly. So thank God I'm born in the family of uh, in the world of sound. I think design is a genuinely um, important space for uh, the Indian consumer and for me, my journey actually started off with learning what design was. After music, sports and design, we hear from writer and director par excellence Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra. India is a wonderful place. I was born and brought up in Old Delhi. It's a wall city. It's one of the oldest capital in the world today still. Uh, after so many civilizations have come and gone. We migrated to New Delhi and uh, my father, he was in a hotel, so we lived in a hotel. Uh, and that hotel was owned by Britishers at that point of time. And uh, we saw a lot of foreigners. I started swimming there. I got my knack for swimming, started swimming um, for, for college, for school, for nationals, up to Asian games and uh, heard a lot of stories about the great sportsmen of yesteryear, Dhyan Chand, Milka Singh, Dara Singh, all that. And they were like folklore to our coaches used to tell us about them and how we don't work hard. Going to school, uh, I was in Air Force Balbharti School in Lodi Road. It was an Air Force school, uh, legally. They used to take some civilians. At the foyer of the school, there used to be a MiG aircraft. Uh, a MiG fighter plane, which we used to import from Russia. And every day, one used to look at the fighter plane and dream of flying it one day and say, I'm going to become a fighter pilot. And not just me, all of us. Uh, I ended up being punished under the plane for coming late most often uh, and still looking at the plane over me. Well, school happened, went into Delhi University. We just came out of, uh, uh, let's say, dark ages in Indian politics, the emergency. And that, those were my college years, two years later. Very politically vibrant, very, we all wanted to change the world, we wanted to change the country. During the festival, talk and say, how are we going to change the country, how are we going to change the country, how we, and then college happened, we all found the first jobs settled, uh, started worrying about your first bike, your first car, your first flat, apartment, marriage, and so on and so forth, a career, and the idea of India uh, kind of faded away. Uh, I started with selling vacuum cleaners door to door. I couldn't sell a single one on my first month, and we used to get just 400 rupees Everything else was sales target, so you make money. The second one I realized there's no point going from housewife to housewife and selling a, a vacuum cleaner or Hoover. So uh, Delhi has a lot of marriages. And they have a lot of these tent houses. You know, they spread a lot of carpets. And I had a neighbor who had this business. So I went to him. I said, how do you clean your carpets? He says, don't ask me. I said, I'll, I'll tell you how you clean your carpets. Just hang it there. Here's a vacuum cleaner. We got a blower. We got this. And we can clean. Oh, how much is it? I said, only that much. Can I buy 10? I said, OK, it's happening. He bought 10. I said, Mr. Malhotra, Malhotra tent house, boss 10. How about Sadar tent house? I'll buy 20. I went to the railway hospital. I went to the institutions after that. Stopped going to the housewives. By the end of the third month, my Pay packet was 90,000 bucks at that time. And I realized this is too easy. It's not happening. It's boring. You're doing the same thing again. So I left the job. But then uh, Japan was happening to India. Uh, Mazda was coming. Toyota was coming. All the LCVs, then the bikes. 
suddenly there were colors, there were indicators, there were, it, it, was, it, it was really good. So I, I had to be a part of that. There was no question. So I joined an advertising agency who was advertising for Master. And they sent me to Japan, I guess, to, to Japanese find me to get some discipline and understand a 7 o'clock meeting is 6.45, not 7.15. Uh, well, experiences, experiences, all happening. Uh, came back, had a difference with my boss uh, on a commercial uh, with the client. The client wanted to fire us. I went up to my boss and I said, give me a chance to make a commercial. So he said, you want to make a commercial? Nobody makes a commercial in Delhi. It all comes from Bombay and they're these big ad filmmakers. I said, just give me whatever money you want to give. So he gave 30,000 bucks. He had to save the client. The client, and we did a commercial. It said, fill it, shut it, forget it for Hero Honda. And it became historical. Bikes started selling. The client was very happy. Uh, I got a double, triple jump in my salary. They even gave me some bikes. But then I realized this is not what I wanted to do. I love making ad films. So I went to my boss. I said, I'm leaving the job. So I went to Bombay to make ad films. I thought Bombay will welcome me. For the next five years, there was no work at all. There used to be one commercial in a year, something. So all that happened. Then this agency walked in one day into my office. Uh, I had a very small place in Bombay. And they said, uh, you have to do these commercials, but we can't tell you what it is all about, whom you have to do with. I said, wonderful. Break the news. It is very hush hush. We can't tell you. I said, how will I make it? You have to tell me. You have to make commercials with Amitabh Bachchan. I said, nah. He will not do it. No, we've signed him. So we met Mr. Bachchan, and I told him, I'm very unhappy. He said, why? I said, I'm also very thrilled I'm getting to work with you. And this is the first time any celebrity is going to come and endorse a product. Televisions and so on and so forth. But I'm really unhappy because all this while I've seen you 80 feet tall, and now you'll be shrunk to 8 inches in a TV, and I'll have the remote. You controlled us, now we're going to control you. He said, that's the future. One thing led to another, and I ended up making my first debut film, Ax, with him. But there's something I don't know, is how to write a film. Writing a film was a very specific thing. It's called a screenplay. So I started reading about screenplay. I said, I'll give myself a break. I'll not make another movie, not even think about making it. For the next five years, I saw 50,000 movies, made my own pointers with it, read all the books. And anywhere in the world I used to go, there used to be this writer called Sitfield, his book on screenplays. And I used to pick it up and read it. and till Sitfield became my guru in absentee. This brought me to my second film called Rang De Basanti. The key point in Rang De Basanti was that there was a huge corruption scandal on MiG aircrafts, which I read in the newspaper. And there was a documentary called Flying Coffins. And my school days, the MiG came back to me. I said, OK, I couldn't be a fighter pilot. Let me do something about the fighter pilots who are dying in peace situation. And then I made a film called Delhi 6, which was about old Delhi. That's the pin code ID, 110006. All my childhood experiences, vignettes from my childhood, my neighbors, my relatives, what I saw happening, people intolerant in this country, the Hindus, the Muslims, the ethnic violence, all that came in. When we shifted from old Delhi to new Delhi, uh, we came to a, refugee, a colony called Lachwadnagar where most of the refugees from partition had come. People who had lost during the ethnic violence of 1947. I had heard horror stories. It was the children who suffered. And one of my childhood heroes from National Stadium when I used to go swimming was Milka Singh. He was just 12 years old, so witnessed the massacre of his mother, father, sisters, brothers, and came from 
now Pakistan to India, picked up a knife to survive, joined the Indian Army, went out to win 77 gold medals out of the 80 international races he ran, broke the Asian Games double record, Commonwealth Games record, Olympic record, the world record. Fantastic. How, do, how does this happen? I'm in a business or my life is about people. So it's always about emotions. For me, this is not a car. It's, I, I, I can see happiness. I can see hard work, perseverance. I can see people who want to sit in this. It's about that. It's not just something red in color made with a lot of power, excellence, and engineering. It's not just that. So for me, excellence has always been serving people, reflecting people in whatever little way I can do. Um, obviously, you have, to be, you have to keep at it. Uh, obviously, the life is too short. Uh, it's very difficult to do it in one lifetime. But uh, there are no complaints because there is so much to learn from. So if you take the baton from there and just hand it over and can be just a link in the chain. Uh, I believe uh, excellence in Indian cinema, I can talk about cinema, that's the only thing I know, uh, is emerging. Uh, there is a school of thought where we want to tell Indian stories to the world. We don't want to make American ideas made in India. We want to make Indian ideas and sell them to the world and show it to the world slowly but surely grow that and export our culture through our films, our stories, tell it to the whole world, and uh, I hope they listen to them. Thank you very much. Our final speaker for the evening is a renowned face from the world of theatre, Sanjana Kapoor. Thank you for having me here. Um, amongst all this wonderfulness, this most delicious creation of Mercedes, which I am completely familiar with from my complete childhood when my father would drive me around in his Mercedes cars forever and ever and ever. And I wish my son was here because he absolutely adores cars. I'm not going to say very much. All I'm going to say is that this word, excellence, it's a really terrifying word for me. Um, it's a wonderful word that one gropes for, one aspires to in my world. I w my world is the world of theater. And yes, I do. I presume I'm here because I also belong to the world of, of cinema. But I chose theater because that is what is my fire in my belly. And both my grandparents had this fire in their belly, and that's where I got it from. The rest of my family went towards cinema, which I think is wonderful. But theater is what charges me. And I think there are only three things, really, that are fundamental to perhaps what we're talking about this evening, when we're talking about excellence. And I think I've grown to realize this from the work I've done over the last 24 years in theater, along with this wonderful bunch of people I work with in my team. And I think when we dream out our dreams and we run after our realizing our dreams, and if we can sit back and say, perhaps that has been successful, perhaps we have achieved something that we aspired to achieve, I think there are three things that have motivated that. And I think the first is that we have been propelled by our passion. We have been propelled by our junoon. And whether it was the inspiration of ironing your parents, I love that story. Or, 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 or whether it is anything at all that has actually given us that fire in our belly. And, and that is what we are propelled by. So you are propelled here by creating these incredible cars. But I think that everything we create has to be something incredibly personal and incredibly passionate. And the second thing, of course, is the dedication and the work. But for us in our field, in theater, it is the attention to detail. And we've always, always, always prided ourselves at the Prithvi Theater, or now with my new baby called Junoon, um, with paying attention to the little things 
and they make the difference. And I'm sure if you go into any of these vehicles, you'll find that it's the little things that make them divine. And I think that's what leads us into that area of, of excellence. But um, there is a third thing, and I think every speaker today has spoken about that. And I think that third thing is a human being. It is touching the person. And for me, in my field in theater, it is two aspects of the human being. It is the performer, and it is ensuring that everything that the performer and the performer's experience has to be the richest experience ever, and the audience, and their experience has to be the richest experience ever. And we think of these two things and keep the person and the human being at the core of everything we work with, and that's why we manage to do what we do. And I think that these three things that propel us, and for me, that's my only learning. I don't think I've achieved excellence, but um, it's something perhaps I aspire to, but I'm not sure it's really a goal for me. For me, the goal is much, much bigger. It's about making all of you love theater and making you all of you value the arts and value every aspect of the arts and find magic in that and see how it can transform your life. So thank you very much for having me here this evening. The evening culminated in a felicitation ceremony where our five speakers were felicitated. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for putting India on the global tennis map, we felicitate Leander Pace. For the great work that he has done in the field of design, we'd like to felicitate Michael Foley. For leaving his indelible mark on Indian cinema, Mr. Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra. For achieving excellence in the field of cultural and performing arts, Sanjana Kapoor. Bringing the curtains down on a glorious evening was the MD and CEO of Mercedes-Benz India, Eberhard Kern, with his vote of thanks. It's my pleasure. So, Shireen and all the team, what a great evening. And uh, I have to say, we all know that 2014, we at Mercedes-Benz called the year of excellence in India, as said by my colleague Ola Kalenius, a lot of conversations happen daily at Mercedes-Benz on attaining excellence. And I would like to thank Mr. Michael Foley, Mr. Leandro Paez, Ustad Amjad Ali Khan, Mrs. Sanjay Kapoor, and Mr. Rakesh Ombramash Mera. Your talk has inspired us, and I'm so sure that many over here would be taking back tonight these into their sphere of works. I would like, dear ladies and gentlemen, to take this opportunity to thank Forbes and Shireen for conducting this evening in an excellent manner. And thank you to one and all for making it to attend this evening here at the Daily Motor Show 2014. In the name of Mercedes-Benz, of all the Mercedes-Benz team, Wish you a very nice and good evening and have a great time here. Thank you so much for being with us.